Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> Okay, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? How's it doing? It's been a, a cool minute since I, I teamed up with Eddie to do East versus West, and Eddie's here, and he's official with his freaking mic stand now. And yes, sir. No, no more holding the mic with my hand, hand no free. More, hand free. So he he has he has a lot more to do. It is currently Super Bowl Sunday as we're recording this, so we're gonna try to hurry up so we can both catch the game. Um, like always, I'm Anthony, and I'm Eddie. That's Eddie. It's been, like I said, a cool minute since we did East versus West. The last couple of weeks I've been texting Eddie, and he's been texting back, and we're finally getting together and doing this. There's a lot to talk about. Um, first and foremost, let's just do a recap. Um, how was your HHN 2019? It was great, man. Uh, I went for opening weekend, got to go to the event three nights. So the, the three nights of that, of that weekend that it was open, I went to every single night. Um, Got to go with some friends, got to go around by myself a few times, um, and just enjoy the whole entire atmosphere. Halloween Horror Nights, as you know, brings an atmosphere to Universal Studios that kind of spills out to City Walk and everything. So it was a great time. Some of the best houses that I've seen. Um, I, I really, really liked what, what they, and you know what, now in, in the grand scheme of things, I'm, I'm really appreciating what they did with uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Um, I've like rewatched some of like the walkthroughs. So all in all, a great haunt season had a, for my channel, I had a small kind of like Christmas season, but I, I, I've kind of been in the, in the background preparing a couple things for the 2020 season. 2020. Yeah. HHN this year was great. Um, haunt season around was great. Um, and I had a blast, uh, killer clowns stole the show for me this year. It was such an amazing maze, really, really well detailed. Um, Ghostbusters was great this year. I loved Ghostbusters. Um, what else did we have? Universal Monsters was great. Creep Show was great. I think the only maze I was very disappointed with this year was House of a Thousand Corpses and Stranger Things. But I mean, I still enjoyed House of a Thousand Corpses every time I went in it because the character interactions I'd have. I ha I was just fresh from watching Three from Hell, so all yeah. the Three from Hell freaking quotes I was saying going through that maze and all the the characters interacting with them was was awesome but um i had an amazing um hhn every time i went uh we met up with tlev so that was always fun um i won the try not to get scared championship so in your face tlev um yeah me and, and will me and will we won well let's let's not forget about the the come from behind winner for me which was us i had us like at number seven on the rankings and it ended up being number one yeah can, can you believe that man us over here to us was just a phenomenal maze i mean there's very little black walls like pretty much none really they they did a really good job with detail in this maze and this was uh one of the underdog mazes as well like i said and i said it before and i'll say it again ghostbusters was another underdog maze which i felt was going to do amazing a lot of people were hating on it because it was a comedy a lot of people were just pissed off that it was coming to the event and i kept saying like this is going to be a good maze i think they're going to find a way to you know blow us away with it and at least over here in hollywood i could speak i enjoyed it there was a lot of effects that they used that blew me away and um just seeing a lot of iconic scenes from that movie was freaking awesome no yeah it was it was a, a great house that landed in my in my top five but us was the come from behind winner yeah. and monsters that I, I remember i i was talking to you about like how they set it up so that when you're going through creature, it looks like you're in the lagoon mm -hmm. un underwater, and that that was an effect that I thought uh, was extremely creative. I would have never thought of positioning it that way, putting like a boat floating above everybody so that you seem like you're underwater, mm -hmm. and they had kelp hanging and everything. It was that was probably my favorite, but I had to give it to to us as number one. Us as number one. All right, now looking forward to the future, man. Twenty twenty is here, and twenty twenty season is um, coming pretty fast we're already a month down of the 2020 year and we're already in february so it's it's kind of it's kind of rapidly approaching which means as time goes on announcements start um coming now i know i already made a prediction video um for my channel or at least so today we're going to focus a lot heavily on um orlando this year because i know a lot of people like to hear 
what's happening on both coasts most of the time. And I have, I think, about one or two predictions for um, Hollywood that me and Eddie had discussed um, that are a little bit of shared, hopefully. Um, there's a lot of rumors flowing around. I'll, I'll, I'll throw the first one out right now. There's a lot of rumors flowing around um, of Billie Eilish uh, potentially getting amazed at the event this year. So here's my, my view on that. I'm not a big fan of Billie Eilish. I like, like, one song, but that's because the song that I liked, another band that I liked, like a ska band, covered it. So I like their version over hers, no, no questions asked. But um, I don't know. I, I don't see Billie Eilish. I mean, and I, and I can't really speak a lot about this because I don't know her music too well, but I don't see it being something horror related i mean the only thing horror related i see with her music was that one album cover she did of her sitting on a bed with like white eyes and making her look possessed that's like the only thing i see horror but i would like literally have to sit down listen to her music and determine whether or not it'd be good for horror but for right now i don't think it'd be good for horror what what i would say is yeah this is a rumor that's going around and obviously she has a lot of eyes on her recently with her music and the awards that she's gotten but i think from an actual like true fan of the event perspective we all believe at, at least the general consensus from what i'm seeing online is that everybody believes that this doesn't deserve any steam and should really get like ignored mm -hmm. but I, I could see where universal could be coming from from a business perspective with this one because she actually is signed to universal records and it could be an easy way of partnering with somebody that has a lot of notoriety at the moment probably a huge following kind of like the same thing that they do with stranger things stranger things isn't necessarily made for the halloween horror nights fanatic but it's good enough that the halloween horror nights fanatic accepts it but it also brings a crowd that would usually not be at the event that's the same thing that they're trying to do with billy eilish if they actually do it but i don't think that this rumor currently deserves any steam there's really nothing behind it besides somebody probably said it in a forum yeah um i don't know i i just think there's so many other great bands um that could get mazes easily um one band behind me right here iron maiden like if you listen to their music and look at the album covers like eddie alone this guy right here this the skeleton looking guy he could literally be throughout the entire maze um i think the misfits deserve one metallica was rumored to get one last year and they had to pull out on that last minute megadeth like a lot of these metal bands that i'm naming their songs can easily fit the theme of horror. I mean, if you think of when you think of, you know, heavy metal music, it relates a lot to horror. And um, prior to that, we've had Alice Cooper at the event, we've had Rob Zombie at the event, we've had Black Sabbath at the event. Those are all heavy metal people, and their music has fit the theming of the event of horror. So I think if you're gonna do a music maze of some sort, it's gotta be something punk or like heavy metal or you know rock because that genre of music fits you know horror um a perfect example of that is the misfits the misfits all they do is talk about horror and halloween and all their songs are basically about like classic monsters and stuff um you know i think theming of that would fit perfect in the maze and especially if you had the skeleton uh, crimson skull running around the entire maze and you see him and then like as you go into each room and you see like different songs playing and it's theming to that song like i can see that happening with billy eilish i just i can't see that um like i said i haven't listened to her music so i i'm not a hundred percent with my opinion yet I, I would have to sit down and listen to her music and determine whether or not this would fit in a maze or not but like Eddie said, I think this is mostly just a business standpoint with Billie Eilish signing with Universal Records. It's good publicity for her, and it's good publicity to get her music out there. But we'll see. Only time will tell with this one. And let me ask you something. So I was just thinking about this as you were saying it, because you said a couple of, of like uh, houses that, that came to your event specifically, but not necessarily to the East Coast. There has been a few in the East Coast that have been with artists. Um, but I think the trend is you, you guys typically to do – tend to do that a little bit more than Orlando does. Like you guys had music by Slash and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, just kind of a thought, this could be one of those houses that it comes to the vet, but not to both coast. Exactly, yeah, because in the past, like Eddie said, Alice Cooper both years has been only in Hollywood. Black Sabbath only in Hollywood. Uh, the Universal Monsters music by Slash has only been at Hollywood. However, Universal Monsters has been on both coasts. Um, Slash has had his own original maze with his own original music. Um, Holidays in Hell was music by Figure. Uh, Universal Monsters Resurrection was another uh, figure maze that they did. So a lot of these 
artists that come to the Hollywood event are usually good friends with John Murdy. So that is why we get them over here. Um, I feel like with music mazes, they should be on both coasts because I think um, creatively both coasts can come up with their own different iconic you know, mazes and, and get creative with it. And that's something I would love to see. Um, it'd kind of be like a versus as to um, who, who created something better. Um, as far as you know with the with the material they have and stuff so it's something i would definitely love to see move out to the east coast eventually i hope that you know the creative team out there can get that same luxury that you know they get out here with the music stuff and bring it to the east coast because that is something i think deserves to be at both parks so everyone can enjoy because i know there's a lot of there's probably a lot of heavy metal fans out there that would love to see that that like who who have seen stuff on youtube of of our event and that want to see it at their event you know what i mean yeah, no, absolutely. I guess my, my last thought on this would be when I initially heard it, I don't know what your reaction was, but when I initially heard it, I just was kind of like, it was one of those things that I have nothing against her as an artist, because just like you, I don't listen to her music. I haven't given it a shot just yet, and it hasn't attracted me the things that I have heard on the radio. But when I heard it, it was kind of more like just annoying that something like that may be potentially coming to the event yeah. or that it was getting steam at all. Yeah, that was the same way. Um, All right. Next thing we're going to talk about is um, Bill and Ted. So Bill and Ted is coming out with a new movie this year. And the rumor is that, at least for Orlando right now, um, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure might be returning. Or Halloween Adventure? I forgot I forgot the name of the... Uh... I think it's Excellent Halloween Adventure. Yeah, but, excellent. Um, yeah, and, and uh, you're right, it... It's currently rumored for Orlando, but I think if it did come to Orlando, it, it very likely would come to Hollywood as well. Yeah. But the, the reason why it's so likely to come to, to Orlando is because it's going to be the 30th anniversary. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think you guys are behind us a little bit because you actually closed the event for a few years. And yeah. then re um, so you're not at 30 just yet, but we're hitting 30. So that means that uh, a couple of the staples that may not necessarily be around anymore are probably going to make an appearance and one of the biggest staples of the event was Bill and Ted. Um, the first few times that I saw Bill and Ted, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, so I, I'm welcoming them coming back towards the end of the, their run. There definitely was a few shows that I wasn't a huge fan of and I skipped over. Mm. I didn't watch like every single night. Um, but I, I'm sure if you're bringing them back with a new movie, it makes sense. Uh, and, and I would enjoy it. It, it was always like a, a nice little break from the walking and the heat just to sit down and laugh for a bit. Yeah, definitely. No, I, I really like Bill and Ted, especially um, what I think would be funny with the show would be the fact that since they are older in this movie, let's cast an older Bill and Ted um, just for the just for the sake of keeping with continuity of um, the movies. But I, I can definitely see them bringing back Bill and Ted, especially, like I said, with this new movie coming out this year. Uh, Bill and Ted face the music. They're supposed to be older. They're, it's going to be with their daughters. And, of course, Death is returning from Bill and Ted, too. And if you guys don't know, in the Bill and Ted show, Death was actually a staple character of that show that would always try to, you know, get Bill and Ted. Um, the way I would describe Bill and Ted, at least for over here on the West Coast, for if you guys been to the event, is at Not Scary Farm. They do a show called The Hanging, which is a parody show of like pop culture and stuff like that. Bill and Ted is the same exact thing. They do a parody show of just pop culture stuff and references and and what was big that year. And um, it's just pretty much a parody show now. My only doubts of it not coming this year is just due to the fact that a lot of people these days get offended easy. That is why this was supposedly the last year of Not Scary Farms The Hanging because a lot of people have been getting offended with the jokes. Um, and, you know, we've come down to a world where a lot, a lot of people can take a joke anymore. So the only reason I – the only way I – the only that's my only downfall for this potentially coming back is the fact that you know, they, yeah. they took it out for a reason, you know? Yeah, they, they took it out for a reason. And it's, you know, the world around us is a little bit more PC than what it, it used to be. But I, I guess that could be also they bring it back, but it's it just isn't as good as it was originally. Yeah. And maybe they that they bring it back. And if it doesn't do well because they're so PC, it just makes that one appearance for the anniversary and it doesn't come back yeah. on the wall. But I, I think if they bring it back and it does really well this year, then there's a high likelihood that they could bring it back and keep it going. They're just going to work under certain PC constraints. Definitely. 
Um, all right, Eddie. So what you got for us for uh, some maybe a couple predictions that you have potentially for coming to the event in 2020? Um, we talked both coasts. Now let's let's get to your side of the predictions because you know, like I said a couple weeks ago, I made my video. As of right now, I don't have any, but I'm gonna wait a little bit and maybe I'll have more. But I want to hear what you got for the west or for the east coast this year. What you got? Yeah. So um, a couple things that I that I've been considering, and uh, you know, I've been doing a little bit of research. You know, the horror made here event has now. Closes doors temporarily. Not sure if it's returning this year. So, horror made here. What that? Horror made here. Yeah, horror made here. Supposedly, but, it's supposed to be returning this year, but we'll see. Yeah, if it doesn't return this year, then I think there's a high likelihood that Universal could poach some of those IPs, and The Conjuring being one of them specifically. Um, people have been calling for it for years. People really love the movie, that franchise, and the whole horror universe. Is basically surrounded around the original Conjuring movies, mm -hmm. so it would make sense for a big year like the the 30th anniversary for them to bring something that people have been clamoring for for a really long time. And if Horror Made Here doesn't return, then that opportunity is there for uh, WB and Universal to partner up and both of them make some money. Um, that's something that I, I think has a low likelihood, but in my eyes, makes sense. You know what? Uh, Touching on that, it almost happened. And I think 2017 at Hollywood, at least, um, yeah. they literally had the facade and everything ready. But at the very last minute, they had to scrap the whole maze because they couldn't get the rights to it or something like that. And it ended up becoming the Titans of Terror maze. So it almost yeah. did happen. It, it it almost did happen one year. So let's hope it happens to hopefully this, this year. Yeah. And I, and I think it, it almost happened before, and they know that the people want it. This time around, they could do a little bit better with the negotiating and preparing for the actual event. Yeah. So that would be like a house that they would, you know, lock down now. Well, uh, touch. I'm sorry. Ahead. Touching on that too, especially since the Conjuring Three is supposed to be coming out later on exactly. this year. So. Exactly. Yeah. And um, I, I don't know if you saw just recently Orlando's uh, Halloween Horror Nights Twitter account uh, tweeted out how many days were left for the event and we could just knock this out of the way. They, they tweeted it out upside down. Oh, nice. Uh, so they, they tweeted two, I think it was like 260 something days left. to Halloween Horror Nights and it was upside down. So um, for those of you who don't know, that is obviously because they're bringing back the Terminator. No, I'm kidding. Dude, uh, this, let's do it. I'm down for Terminator. I will fly all the way out to Orlando to watch that show again. I love that show. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Straight, they're obviously hinting at Stranger Things. Um, Stranger Things, the Upside Down, they they announced Stranger Things for the past two years as the first house. So I, if that is the case, which I, I think everybody knows it is, get it out the way. Just go ahead and announce it so we can start thinking about the other houses that are coming. Because yeah. if you save that one for last and we know that it's coming anyway, it's like I, I know there's a wasted amount of announcement coming down the road. Yeah. Cause I that, just that's – uh... I hope that you guys, I mean, your guys' last year Stranger Things was fucking amazing and ours was shit. Oh, so I, yeah. I hope that if we do get Stranger Things again, I know that was one on Sammy's um, prediction list. I hope if we do get it, this is a major redemption for them because season two, they had so much to work with over here in season two and they didn't work with it. And even the little season three tease that we got at the end, it was okay, but it wasn't as good as the one in Orlando. And I'm yeah. hoping since season three, you have so much to work with with season three with the Starcourt Mall, the Russians, Demogorgons, you know, uh, freaking Billy being all freaking mind flared and shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you have so much to work with. So yeah. just don't fuck it up. Yeah, Starcourt Mall looked amazing and I, I could really see myself enjoying a much larger presentation of that actual facade and everything. So we'll see um, how, how it comes out, but the likelihood of it coming to the event is extremely high. Yeah, They've, It's brought a whole new crowd of people to the event. The, the line for that house is generally always over a, an hour and a half. Um, so it, it obviously has a huge following. Yeah. Uh, but Universal, go ahead and announce it already because – you know, it's been the first announcement for the past few years, and the likelihood is it's coming again. Not Don't to mention, you. that's always the first merchandise that sells out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then um, I, I think another house that may be coming, um, one that's been a staple at the event, and I could actually hold on, I'm going to grab something. Uh, one that I, I think, if it's an anniversary year, it's been to the event so many times, and you'll know that I love this franchise myself, um, Halloween. Yes. Uh, 
So I, I think there's a strong, strong likelihood that Halloween will be returning to the event just because it's been a staple at the event for such a long time. And it's relevant now more than ever in the past years when they actually brought it to the event. It wasn't that relevant. Um, you know, there wasn't like a, a remake that was breaking records like the Halloween remake just or not Halloween remake, the Halloween 2018. New, yeah, the, the new Halloween kind of did. Yeah, that, not to mention know? Halloween Kills comes out this year, so it would be perfect yep. to bring them to the event to hype everyone up. Exactly, exactly. So um, I, I think that's one that has a lot of steam behind it, and it from a an anniversary standpoint, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess I could wrap this all up with what all the people in Orlando that are like true like horror fans and true Halloween Horror Nights fans are clamoring for and really want, which is the return of the icons. Um, the icon, icon years were some of the most amazing years at Halloween Horror Nights, some of the most terrifying years at Halloween Horror Nights. And I, I think it's just like Bill and Ted, one of the things that fell to the PC world and they removed because it was just a little bit too terrifying. I remember when they had the director, um, they people were actually petitioning for the commercial to be removed because the commercial for Halloween Horror Nights was too intense. Um, that's how amazing the, the like commercial was. And I, I want to go back to those days, but the icon that we all know will more than likely hold down the event and has been to several of the anniversary years is Jack. Um, so Jack is more than likely going to be back. And Jack is back. Exactly. You miss me. Um, but we, we have a good chance that we'll see some of the other uh, icons as well, maybe an icon house, uh, maybe an icon scare zones, who knows, but it's likely going to be the, the icon is going to be the icon of the event. Go back to those years instead of having like a, what oh, ah, somebody's calling me, sorry. Um, instead of it being like, you know, the eighties, like it's been the past couple years, Let's make it they're going to have an icon with like a backstory. <laughs> Hopefully you, uh, uh, the web page is very like uh, they've had in the past. I don't know if they've done it, if they've done it in in Hollywood. Um, but when I first started going to Halloween Horror Nights, the website would slowly build up, and there was like games that you could play to as as a community yeah. get the website built up. So when you would solve certain puzzles, certain new things would be added to the website. So if they could do something like that and maybe have a backstory for how Jack has returned. That would be mind blowing. An um, ARG I, game. Yeah, yeah. So um, that that's kind of everything I have in a nutshell. There's a couple other things that I'm thinking about, but um, I got to do a little bit more research to really figure out how that would work for the anniversary year. Definitely, yeah. Like I said, I'm gonna probably have more when they do the first announcement, and I'll talk a little bit more when they do for that first announcement. Um, so stay tuned for that. But just to do a little quick week, uh, recap for today's episode, we talked a little bit about the Billie Eilish rumors of it be potentially becoming a maze this year at the event, um, give our opinions and thoughts on that. Uh, potentially, The potential of Bill and Ted returning to the event this year um, is about a 50-50 chance just because you know 50 say no because the fact of – you know, people can't take a joke. 50 say yeah because of the hype of the new movie, which would be great marketing for both of them. So, um, And then Eddie gave his East Coast – he gave four East Coast predictions that he hopes comes to the event this year. Uh, Conjuring, Stranger Things, uh, Halloween, and the, uh, the Return of the Icons. So, um, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching another episode. We're going to try to be more consistent on these. I know me and Eddie have different schedules. We're on different coasts, different time zones, and we have different um, – work schedules and you know everything so we're gonna try to be as consistent at least if we can at least drop at least once a month that'd be nice but uh we'll definitely have to talk something out but uh ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching another episode of east versus west and we will see you guys in the next one deuces